Remind everyone, of course, this is the 415ers coming at you three times a week. Evan Giddings and Mark Grandy on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Um, let, let's take this more towards towards the game on Sunday, Mark, because there's a lot looming over this game. There's a lot on the line for both teams, quite honestly. But the 49ers are dealing with, with so many injuries, it seems, and ones at impactful positions. I mean, just going through the injury report from this week for those of you watching on youtube we have them up on our on our lower third banner but eric armstead another week uh, he did not practice on thursday or wednesday he's dealing with a foot slash ankle dre greenlaw who was injured during the kansas city game did not practice wednesday or thursday he has a calf looking at Jawan jennings who suffered a hamstring injury didn't practice yesterday either. Kyle's used Kyle Uzcheck will miss this game, according to Kyle Shanahan against the Rams. He broke his finger against the Kansas City Chiefs. Debo Samuel, meanwhile, apparently was kind of hit with a hammy during the Chiefs game as well. He didn't practice on Thursday and was labeled as day to day. Um, good news for Trent Williams, who was rested on Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. Jason Verrett, as we mentioned early in the episode, was limited to practice. He may not play in this game, but appears to be on track to get back maybe after the bye. Samson Ebukam was limited to practice on Thursday. He has an Achilles. Like, there's just so many different spots in which the four Niners are banged up. And even at some, that, uh, some positions in which they had healthy against the Rams, that could certainly impact this game. Yeah, I mean, Debo Samuel, of course, is the biggest name that I think people are going to, you know, latch on to. And it, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, a negative here, but it doesn't seem great that he's going to play. And that's just that's just my opinion. I know the Niners really want to win this game. Um, and it, it's against a team that Debo Samuel has had a ton of success in against the past. I mean, you look at his last handful of games, 115 receiving, 95 receiving yards, plus 45 on the ground. 97 receiving yards, 36 on the ground, 133 receiving yards. Those are just the last four games for Debo Samuel against the Rams. Uh, he's as good as it gets against this opponent. But considering it is a hamstring injury, that Debo Samuel has a history of these sorts of injuries, and given the fact that you have a bye coming up after this one, I am not 100% sure if it's worth the risk for the 49ers, and we will ultimately see, but it does not seem great, in my opinion, uh, but if you're without Debo Samuel, uh, you're without Kyle Juszczyk, uh, Ross Dwelly, the one of the uh, tight ends, is probably going to come in and, and play that fullback role. That's what he's done in the past when Kyle Juszczyk has, has gone down. Uh, it's hard to see this 49er run game being as effective as they would like to be. I know Christian McCaffrey is here, and he can do a lot of the things that Debo Samuel can do. It probably just means more touches for McCaffrey if Debo Samuel does miss, but you consider the fact that Yushek is also going to be out. You do get, you know, Trent Williams back again, which is good. Um, but it's, it's certainly casting a shadow, I think, on the 49ers ability to run the game, uh, run the ball, excuse me. And then you also have Juwan Jennings potentially uh, missing. And then that throws a giant wrench into your plans in the passing game as well. He's been a, a favorite target of Jimmy Garoppolo on third downs. Of course, Debo Samuel uh, as a wide receiver, we know what he can do as well. So, a lot of things up in the air right now as the Niners try to game plan for this game because they're just simply not sure who is even going to be out there and able to play. Yeah, and, and Debo is, as you mentioned, been a big part of their success against the Rams, obviously was the star on Monday night earlier on this season. But it, it's kind of interesting. Actually, he's he has played in all six of the last games against the Rams. That is by far the most that he's played against a division opponent. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they are <laughs> six and zero in those regular season games that he has played. Um, he's averaging just under 11 yards per target. Uh, he gets the ball quite a bit about six yard or six receptions per game. I should say 75 yards per game. Um, he has his highest catch percentage against the Rams. I know that people have, sort of malign Debo Samuel for some of the drops that he's had specifically last season when which he led the league this year. He also has had some drops as well, um, but he, for some reason, seems to play up to the Rams. And I know that Christian McCaffrey is an adrenaline boost in the greatest kind of way and kind of does similar things to Debo Samuel, but it, it is going to be impossible frankly, to replace him on offense and what he does and what he does specifically against the Rams. He has helped the 49ers in the regular season and, um, you know, 
in, in the conference championship to an extent, try and, and help this team put their best foot forward against a, a team that I, I believe Mark is in, at least the 49ers are in a must-win position this week against the Rams to get back to 500. Um, I think the, the 49ers need to win this game against Los Angeles on the road for a couple of reasons. One, obviously you want to get back to 500 and you want to get back into what will probably be first place in the NFC West based on the, the early returns on this division. <laughs> but I think also going into the bye week, you can't have two weeks where things are allowed to fester and where things that we've seen kind of creep into the locker room in the last two weeks. We've seen George, George Kittle be outspoken about the effort on this 49ers team. We see Jimmy Ward hint at him not being used properly this week. There are things that around Brandon Ayuk calling out the offense saying they need to score more than 23 points against the Chiefs with the amount of playmakers that they have. There are things that I'm sort of keeping an eye on that could permeate should they fall to three and five with two weeks of rest heading into then two weeks later against the Chargers, another great football team uh, that is currently above 500. Like there's a lot that could sort of happen in that bye week. So as much as they do need to get back to 500, I think it's more important to win this game to get the team back on track mentally more than physically. Yeah, no doubt. It's obviously a huge game. And I think uh, w one of the big injuries, I know we, we kind of talk about it, but he's been out a while. I think we kind of forget how important uh, Eric Armstead is to this 49ers team. And I, and I want to focus on him here for a minute. If, if you think back to last year, Niners were in a similar position than they are now. They were three and five, had a game against the Rams coming up. And a lot of people like to point to, and they're obviously right in this, the Niners season changed last year when suddenly Debo Samuel started running the ball more. That was a huge change for the 49ers, specifically, of course, on the offensive side. But what also changed for the 49ers around that same time? After week seven and leading into week eight, of course, the Niners were three and five. So this change happened a week before the season kind of turned around. Eric Armstead was moved from the outside to the inside of the defensive line and basically served as the team's elite run stopper. You look at the numbers last year for the 49ers, weeks one through seven, again, with Armstead playing on the outside. The defense here is expected points added again. Niners run defense expected points added rank. Middle of the pack, 14th in the NFL. And the Niners have said over and over again, and this was pointed out by David Lombardi on The Athletic, the Niners have said you have to earn the right to rush the passer. How do you earn that right? By stopping the run, making your opponent throw the ball. The 49ers were not doing that the first seven weeks of last season. Again, middle of the pack against the run. Then they moved Eric Armstead into the middle of the defense, middle of the defensive line, and he essentially turned this into an elite run defense. Weeks eight through the NFC Championship game, the Niners, the best run defense in the NFL. And what did that translate into? More sacks, about three and a half per game, up from just over two per game prior to Armstead's move. Now you look at the Niners this season. Eric Armstead has played in three games, week one, week two, he missed week three, and then week four. That week four game was the dominant win over the Rams when you know, they won 24 to nine with Armstead. The Niners, based on that same metric, the eighth best run defense in the NFL, averaging four sacks per game. Again, you stop the run, you earn the right to rush the quarterback. And the Niners, when they stopped the run, were elite at rushing against the quarterback. But now without Eric Armstead, without your stalwart de defender in the middle of the defensive line to stop the run, the Niners, the 24th ranked run defense. And this has been really, really a bad part of their defense recently. Think back to the Atlanta Falcons game, who just ran all over the 49ers without Armstead. And with that 24, 24th ranked run defense, the Niners suddenly just about two and a half sacks per game, again, without Eric Armstead. So I think we're forgetting just how important he is and how much better the Niners were last year when they moved him from the outside to the inside. Now the Niners have him nowhere, obviously. He's out with an injury, and it seems unlikely that he will play this week against the Rams. But I think the 49ers, until they get Armstead back, they're going to struggle continually to stop the run. And what that means is they're not going to be able to get home to the quarterback nearly as often because they won't have as many chances because opposing teams are so 
uh, comfortable running the ball. So I think we overlook his importance sometimes. Obviously, we know he is an important piece, uh, but we also forget how big of an impact his change made for this 49er team last year. And uh, without him at all this year, the team is certainly struggling. And his absence is as big of a reason as any, I think, for the 49ers' struggles uh, recently, especially when you consider their abil- their inability to, to stop the run. No, that's a good point. And I think that Debo on offense as well as Armstead on, or yeah, Debo on offense and Armstead on defense, kind of the, the, the coinciding with the run that they won on. If you just look at the amount of yards that they gave up last year, they only gave up 90 or more yards in two regular season games beyond, um, beyond that, of course, Arizona Cardinals loss, but it puts them at, put them at three and five. And both of those games were losses outside of that. They allowed 50, 54, 67, 85, 62. Um, they went 9-1, and one, and of course the last uh, loss was in the conference championship game to the Rams when they allowed 90 or fewer yards. Like they, they were very good against the run, so I think that's an excellent point and something that we'll certainly pay attention to this week uh, if the Rams try and run the football because each of the past two opponents have shown that maybe the Chiefs didn't do it as much because they got whatever they wanted through the air, but specifically the Falcons showed opponents that you can run on this Niners defense to your point without a guy like Eric Armstead. Yeah, I, I'm totally in agreement with you, and the Chiefs did have some success as well. Um, but yeah, not, not nearly as much. They were past first offense anyway, but there were still some opportunities for them in that run game. So the Niners desperately need Eric Armstead back on the defensive side of the ball. They could desperately use Debo Samuel against the Rams. I mean, I, I think, you know, we're coming up here on predictions in, in a minute to wrap up the episode, Evan. Um, I think ultimately maybe the winner loss decision comes down to is Debo Samuel going to play because that's just how good and how dynamic he is uh, for this 49er team specifically against the Rams. I mean, we, we kind of briefly mentioned it a little bit ago, but even in what was relatively a down game, you know, week, uh, what was that week four against the Rams? He did have that one incredible touchdown catch and run for 50 yards or whatever it was, where he broke like seven tackles on the way to the end zone, ultimately six catches, 115 yards. But besides that one, just absolutely backbreaking, mind bending catch and run, he wasn't all too effective and he only had two yards on the ground, uh, but he still just has a different level, it seems, uh, when he plays against the Rams. Uh, but his past games, I mean, 95 yards in the NFC Championship game through the air, 45 more on the ground, had a rushing touchdown. Very similar stat line in the last game of the regular season last year as well. 97 receiving yards, 36 yards on the ground. He is incredible against the Rams. And uh, I don't know, at this point, I still haven't even made up my mind on what I want to pick as the result of this game, because I'm just going back and forth between if Debo Samuel is going to play or not. Well, I think the odds makers are kind of with you, Mark, because right now the Niners are one, are one and a half point favorites on the road. So the Rams are, are a home dog. Uh, the total is right now 42 and a half on most sites. And it'll be interesting to see how Debo, whether he plays or not, affects both of those lines. I'm, I'm kind of with you. And I know that, like I, I described this game as a must win for the 49ers. Uh, but that's also because I feel like their situation with the amount of bodies that they're missing, Debo or not, is is pretty dire. And I know that they have had regular season dominance against the Rams. It's been a chance where they can get right in most of those spots, and they have, especially last year. But but something about this game and the way that things have been trending for the Niners, I I just I almost feel like they're going to be back to three and five heading into the bye this week. Um, if we're going to, to do predictions, uh, also, I do have to note, I have been wrong, and I believe each of the past three predictions. So hopefully <laughs> me picking the Rams in this game will allow the 49ers to come back and win. Uh, but if I'm going to take a team, I think it would be a slight margin. I think the under continues to roll for the 49ers, even though it does, did not last week. I think it returns to the norm of what they've typically been doing. Um, I'm going to say that the Rams defeat the Niners 21-17. to at home at SoFi Stadium. That would be my prediction. All right, 21-17. I have a slim margin as well. And in fact, I'll go out on a limb. I'll say this game's going to overtime. I just have a feeling wow. about this game down in SoFi. Uh, I'll say Niners 23, Rams 20. 
Uh, Robbie Gold hits a game-winning field goal. The Niners walk off winners in SoFi 23-20. to uh, If you bet the under and this happens, I'm sorry because it was uh, it would have been sitting at 40 at the end of regulation, but because the, the teams were tied, we had to get play an extra period. Uh, so beware there. Beware of overtime always under betters, but 23-20 is my prediction. Niners come out on top. Well, and if you want to bet on overtime, it's plus nine fifty. So Ooh. if you're if you're with Mark, there might be a little juicy line for you. Maybe uh maybe I could a sprinkle, parlay. I could sprinkle some there. You never know. Yeah, it is a payday Friday. Um <laughs> <laughs> that will wrap up this uh, this episode and edition of the 415ers podcast. We appreciate you tuning in as always. If you have not, make sure to download, rate, and subscribe. Five stars are much appreciated by myself, Evan Giddings on social at Giddings10. And of course, Mark Grandy is always on social at Mark Grandy, Mark with a C, Grandy with an I. Mark, thank you so much, sir. I look forward to talking to you on Monday. Sounds good. Look forward to it as well, Evan. All right. Enjoy the game, everyone. Hopefully the Niners can pull it out, and hopefully they can head into the bye four and four. In the meantime, we will talk to you and enjoy the weekend.